Hi, I'm Hayley Victoria and welcome back to my crime and policing channel. In today's session, we are looking at something slightly different. Now, I know that most of you guys who watch this channel look at it for the um, current policing practice that we'll look at for the PCDAs, DFs, IPLDIPs, PPDs and everything else in relation to uh, new recruits into the police service. However, a lot of the stuff I focused on previously so before bringing in all the police in practice was all about crime scene investigation, forensics and other such things that are kind of like my areas and the things that I taught in my previous job. Something came up in the news recently and as a forensic enthusiast it sparked my interest and I thought some of you guys might like to unpick it with me too. Now this case is massive I think in terms of forensics because it's something we've not seen for a long, long time. In fact, I think some like 0.5% of all murders are committed through poisoning. Now, to see one, such an obvious case popping up in the news now just really stunned me. And as such, I had to have a look at it. And I wanted to talk through all the different bits and bobs um, with the community on here on YouTube because I really appreciate all the comments and thoughts you have as well. Now, this case, um, somebody has been charged, arrested and charged for the murder we're going to talk about. However, they've not been sentenced yet. So, it's not gone to court. That does mean that there's been... We, we can't 100% say that this is, you know, the guilty party that we're going to talk about. But it's not looking good. What we are going to do is discuss everything and see if you've got any other theories or something. But the main thing... As always, this is a real case. There are real victims attached to this, so not only the person who's been killed, that person's family. So in no way does this glamorise anything. It's just a very interesting case forensically, and that's in terms of um, trace evidence, toxicology, and in terms of digital forensics as well. So it's something super important that we could do looking at, because a lot of this stuff in terms of forensics underpins a lot of learning that you're going to do in terms of preservation of crime scenes, evidence, etc. What we're talking about here is the death of Angela Craig. Now, Angela Craig was 43 years old, a mother of six beautiful children um, from Aurora in Colorado. Her husband, James Craig, is a dentist and... Um, yeah, they had a beautiful big house in Aurora, this place. And what, what nice, where is that, Aurora in Colorado? Beautiful big house. The family had everything on paper. And it was, like I said, six gorgeous kids, uh, a dentist. So we all know how much they earn, which is a lot more than police officers. Um, so a dentist, six kids, beautiful wife, beautiful family. They like going on adventures, like skiing, snowboarding, mountain climbing, mountain biking. They sounded like a... Like an all-round, like, wholesome family. Like, the dream, right? I mean, I don't know if six kids is my dream. But, I mean, some people like to have more than one or two. I think they're terrifying. But, equally, yeah, they had this amazing thing on paper. It looked like they had everything they could want. So, what happened? Well, um, James had been having affairs. Numerous affairs, according to the victim's sister, he got gambling problems, drug problems. He sounds like a bit of a psychopath, in all honesty. There was a case previously to um, the tragic death of his wife where he drugged her before. Apparently, he drugged her because he wanted to kill himself and he didn't want her to try and stop him, so he drugged her. Now, despite all of this, um, Angela really wants to try and make it work for her family. And... Although she tried to leave a couple of times, he always talked around and she ended up staying. And that's what her sister said anyway. Um, and even though he was a dentist and we know they earned loads of money, it wasn't all polished and perfect in the working world for James either. And that's because for some reason, probably the gambling, he'd um, kind of run it into the ground, his dental practice. There are actually like reviews online that have come up since this case about where he'd quoted for work that didn't need doing on people, charged people a lot of money for dentistry that didn't need to be done. Now, in the UK, where I'm based, we have the NHS, which is amazing, by the way. But a lot of countries don't have stuff like this. We're very, very lucky, very fortunate. So we're like, you can get your teeth done here, and it might cost you, like I don't know, 80 quid for a filling 
over there it's thousands of pounds. I mean, if you go private, like you have like uh, braces and stuff, I think this line, um, that costs a bit more, obviously. But for your NHS treatments, fillings, etc., it's kind of cheap over here. Over there, it's extortionate. And it's kind of got a bad reputation for ripping people off and being a bit of a scammer. But anyway, so um, at this time, he was struggling financially. Or I think there was like a word that his sister used, something about financial ruin or something. Um, and he was having an affair with an orthodontist from Texas. I don't know what um, they thought about all this. Or what they do think about all this. Maybe we'll find out when he goes looking to call. Um, yeah, so he was having an affair with some orthodontist from Texas. And on March the 6th, so the day after, Angela got home from her sister's house in Utah, where she was medically fine, by the way. Totally fine. March the 6th, she gets home. And after a while, she doesn't feel very well. She starts to she feel a bit dizzy, a bit funny, a little a bit gross, you know. Um, just wasn't feeling very well. Now, all of this is captured on text messages between the victim and the suspect. So she's telling me, oh, you know, he, he messages her saying, thank you for making me a drink, baby. I love you. And she's like, oh, yeah, you're welcome. I love you too. Oh, I don't feel very well. And he's like, yeah, um, oops, I put too many B vitamins and you broke Dean powder. Sorry. And uh, she's like, okay, cool. Maybe that's it. Yeah, just some, some B vitamins or something. Well, um, so over the next few days, she starts to feel a little bit worse. She's com um, complaining of like nausea uh, and like tummy ache and stuff. If we go back to like some of the cases we've studied before, all the things that she's listing, these, these symptoms that she has, headache, exhaustion, she's throwing up, sound a lot like poisoning, don't they? A lot like a particular type of poisoning that we've covered before, which is arsenic, which was undetectable for a long, long time until the work of James Marsh. What a genius that guy was. Um, so, yeah, all the things, these um, symptoms she was complaining of sound very much like arsenic poisoning, don't they? So while she's feeling like cack, her husband uh, messages her saying, I know this might, you know, make you worried, but I promise I've not drugged you. Because, you know, he drugged her before. And now he's like, I haven't drugged you, I promise. And she's like, I feel like I've been drugged, I don't feel right. He's like, I haven't, trust me. Well, can't, can we? Can we, James? At least we don't think we can. Anyway, so, she gets a bit into hospital on the 9th of March, um, 2023. So this is only a couple of weeks ago from when I'm recording this video. I don't know when you're watching it, but only a couple of weeks ago since I recorded this, she was admitted into hospital between the 9th of March and the 14th of March. Now, throughout this time, he's flew in his mistress, who he's having an affair with from Texas. All the while, he's um, visiting his wife, he's texting her, she's texting him. I love you, can't wait for you to get better, all that kind of stuff. I'll pop some examples on the screen. This is just me waiting for them to be on the screen. So they're all very, very, um, on the surface, it seems kind of normal. And then it, like, it gets a bit weird. It's like, oh... <sighs> I, I had a dream that I was like, I can't wait to make love to you or something. And she's like, it's not really on my priority list right now. I'm just trying not to throw up. Um, get your priorities straight, guys. So, yeah, she's not feeling very well. She's in hospital. And they don't really know what's wrong with her hospital. They've not figured it out yet. They know she's not well. She goes for some scans and some tests. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, by the way. I feel all right. So this is on the 14th of March. And she gets, um, she gets sent home. She gets discharged. Now, she comes back into hospital on the 15th of March after suffering a massive seizure and she's brain dead. Um, and then she's pronounced dead on the 18th of March. So she's, um, yeah, she goes home for one day after the hospital discharged her. Then she goes back to hospital and quickly uh, deteriorates and, and she passes away. So absolutely tragic for her family. Those six children, absolutely tragic. Um, now then... All the messages and stuff that they're sending sound quite normal, don't they? Um, but when she passed away, he refused an autopsy. He said they didn't want her to have one. And he said, you know, if they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her when she was alive, they're not going to do it when she's dead. They're not poking about with her when she's dead. I don't want them to do it. So she refused an autopsy. Even though the family are like, look, we need to know if this is genetic. We've got six kids in this family. We need to know if something like this might happen to them. He's refused one. Oh, dear. So... Why then has he been arrested and charged? So we know that, yeah, he's having affairs, he's into drugs and stuff, he's drugged it before. Does that give you a reason to? 
What other stuff has come to light that have indicated this guy might be up to no good? Well, clearly being a dentist doesn't mean that you are the most intelligent person um, in the world, James Craig. Because remember, every contact leaves a trace. So we've discussed that before, haven't we? Every contact leaves a trace. And we're talking about Lockhart's exchange principle. And generally, I use that in terms of like uh, tactile things where um, that trace evidence is being passed from one thing to another. So I talk about that quite a lot when we look at forensic investigations and crime scene preservation. However, now we're looking at digital contact. Now that also leaves a trace. You would be um, naive to think that you could go online and search for stuff and people wouldn't find it. You'd be naive to think that um, you could just delete your history and it's deleted from the world. That's not how things work. Not if investigators want to get to it, they can. And stupidly enough, uh, James Craig has researched some things online prior to his wife's death. Um, in fact, on February 23rd, he purchased some arsenic through Amazon. Right, okay, cool, yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to commit crime on the web, you generally use the dark web, right? You wouldn't use Amazon to order arsenic. However, James Craig did. Um, so he ordered arsenic on Amazon. He also had his search history on Google discovered, where he was searching up, you know, um, how to make poison, top five plants that poison you, um... Was, what else was it? Oh, how to poison someone and not get caught. So he's Googling all this stupid stuff, which definitely indicates that he might have been up to something. So he's Googling all this. His search history, yep, he's trying to make poison. He's trying to kill his wife and not be detected. He's ordered arsenic. Now then, he orders arsenic which on 23rd of February, like we know, and that's believed to have been administered on the 6th of March in the protein shake where he put too many B vitamins I don't think arsenic falls under the B vitamin category, but, you know, I'm no scientist. Well, not that kind of scientist. So, yeah, he um, is arrested, obviously, and charged. What also comes to light is some cyanide. So if arsenic wasn't good enough, he's ordered some potassium cyanide. Now, he gets this delivered to work. I mean, really? And he asked one of his colleagues, oh, don't open it. I've got a delivery coming. Don't open it. Yeah, it's private. And that colleague's like, okay, whatever. Somebody else opens it, another colleague, and they're like, cyanide? It's got a biohazard sticker on. Why on earth have we got cyanide in the dentist? So they do a little bit of Googling about cyanide. Well, what is it? What is this that's been delivered here? And notice that the symptoms are very, very similar to what Angela's symptoms are. And uh, that colleague alerts the authorities. Oh, dear. So it's not looking good for James Craig at present, um, as obviously he's ordered um, arsenic and the cyanide off the internet. He's uh, poisoned his wife before. And when they raided the house, which of course they did, they wanted to go and check out, see what kind of stuff they find there. They found all the protein shakers and things. They found some suspicious powders, which are obviously a way for toxicology reports or part of their case. And this is what's happening currently so there's been a data analysis and like I mentioned that's where they got all the online stuff so his google search history all the text messages the fact that he's flown in his mistress from Texas while his wife's in a hospital it is gross so talking about James as a person then James Craig when we've looked at things about forensic psychology before about people's behaviors we've said a lot of things about the thrill seekers and the power and control so if we look at his kind of behaviours, he's a gambler, he's been addicted to drugs, a uh, porn, a pornography addict as well since he was um, a teenager, lots of affairs, very risky behaviour. Um, so that's kind of given me a bit of a, th a thrill seeker, but not when it comes to, to murder, I don't think, because he's very premeditated, obviously, it feels to me like he's tried it before, or he's at least put his toe in the water to see if he can get away with it when he's poisoned it previously. And um, whether or not he just wanted to get rid of her, is it struggling financially? Was there a financial reward for this? Was, has he taken out life insurance recently? These are questions I have. I'd love to know what questions you have as well, if you can pop them in the chat for me. Um, so is it a financial thing? Why didn't he just let her leave him? Is it because if she'd left him, she'd take off the house, all that kind of stuff? His reputation? Is he a bit of a narcissist? 
does he want because he's like given like talks and stuff as well before promoting his dentist about how he's a happily married man got a beautiful life perhaps he should left him then that would have ruined this image he's created for himself that he wants to portray to the public a little bit ship money if you think about it that way so he's been promoting this lovely idyllic life it's not how it is behind closed doors as we know he's been having multiple affairs he's got all these different addictions um that are untreated and yeah his wife bless her has bought the ultimate price of that so yeah that's the story so far please let me know what you think as well in the comments and things do you think it's uh, nailed on is, is it him 100 percent? has it been framed i don't think so but let me know what you think I will update this as it goes, so as things come through in relation to court, sentencing and stuff like that. But I thought with it being a toxicology case in 2023, it's just astounded me that people are, are still trying to do stuff like this. The fact that it's got like cyanide and um, arsenic off Amazon is pretty weird and not thinking that would be detected. There's a lot of things you can get away with by being a dentist or a medical profession. That is not one of them. In fact, before she was released on the 14th, so I think it was the 12th, his message was just saying, do you want me to hook you up with some IVs from the dentist? No, thanks. But obviously he's subsequently gone and got some cyanide and done it that way. So yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think. I'd love to open the discussion about this case. Please keep it respectful because they're all, like I said, real victims attached to this. That's it from me today. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe, look after each other, and please don't commit any crimes.